O sado, o sado. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, especially when we practice this meditation, always you have to remember as a profitable skill, how you can apply this meditation to your day-to-day -day life. Because you are not separate from the practice. So your practice become who you are. So whatever you eat become your body. When you eat a banana morning, in the evening it become your body. You cannot escape from it. You cannot separate it. So same like what you practice become your life. But deeply when it comes to meditation, in day-to-day -day life that mostly we, we, we make it limited only for some time period. But the meditation, it's always your mind should tune to certain level of vibration, certain level of energy, certain level of awareness. So in this very moment, in this practicing, we sharp it, we, we, we make it clear. It's kind of like you put your vehicle to the service station. You service it. Then after that, you may drive it for few months without any service. So once you practice, remember in day-to-day -day life with your bodily, verbally, and mentally actions, always you have to apply this to your life. And in a certain level, there is a time come, continuously your mind start to be with the moment, with the very the, the clear understanding, the clarity. And then, and then the life itself become practice. Then you no need to kind of like a sitting and practice. So that is where you, you, you become little by little, little by little sharp. And when you keep practice meditation, one of the greatest miracle can happen to you, may happen to you, is you start to see your own mind. You start to see your own behavior. Like you having a, the bird eye view regarding your own life. So once you start to see your own mind, that is the very important thing. Because that we talk about the sati, we talk about the awareness, clear comprehension. So mainly, we have to understand that we all in a kind of like a natural process. So as example, the whatever the, the colors or the pictures come to your eye and then you have this physical eye, this both come together and that contact itself, when it happen, eye consciousness arise. It is not, it is not you, you cannot personalize it. It is a system. The whatever the sound, so the sound appear according to the four elements and the, so according to that, then you have the ear, when the sound come to your ear, ear consciousness arise. It is a mechanism. You cannot personalize it. You cannot hold this experience as me. Because if you can hold it as you, that as experiencer, you, if you develop authority with the self-centered mind, this is me, I am experiencing this. Why, that dis why it disappear? Look at in your life, how many sweet words that you heard, beautiful, nice words you heard. See what happened, why it disappear? And also there are very rough, ugly words we heard. 
And in the moment we hold and thinking this is ugly, but see what happened. It also disappeared. So you have to experience this, the mechanism with the nose also the same. When the aroma is there and when it comes to your nose, in that very moment, nose consciousness arise. So the aroma, nose, nose consciousness, these three things make the real nose. The tongue also the same. Taste, taste come out of the four elements. So all this outside perceptions come out of the four elements. There is nothing else. That four elements can go to more deeper, deeper level to eight elements. Suddhastaka. So, and there is nothing else. So the heat, motion, liquidity and hardness and the color smell, taste, and the energy. So those are the, the fundamental eight qualities when it comes to the outside world, the material world. There's nothing else. Period. Don't, don't, you don't ponder over it. You stop there. You get, you settle down there with that. That is dharma. That is what, when you hold it to, that knowledge, you don't look beyond that. You have no question. Is there anything else? You trust it. You get into the conviction. You hold it to it. That is what called dharma. And when you keep practice, in the, in the beginning, you don't need to believe it, but you hold it to it when you keep practice. Keep practice, keep practice. You start to see. There is nothing else. That is where you deeply, deeply start to, to develop the clarity. But in the beginning, remember this, it is very careful. If the, in the beginning, if you have the doubt regarding the dharma, that doubt itself create unclear mind. So then having a doubt itself, we cannot get into to the clear part. So that's why in the beginning, you have to get, come to the point to trust the dharma and get it and start to go on the way by experiencing. You're going to recognize how this is going to work. The thing is, on the way, you're going to recognize it. Same like when you look at the mirror yourself, you can see. And when you look at the mirror yourself, if you see somebody else, you, you recognize it is not me. This is somebody else. So the Dharma also kind of like a mirror when you start to keep practice. When you start to keep practice again and again and again, when you become very clear, what will happen? The dharma, you can see the dharma and itself you see if it is wrong, you see it going. To, it is wrong. And your mind becomes so clear. So that is the very important point because mostly we come, we get into to practice or we get into to learn something. Even children go to school without confident or without trust. If the child go to school, if the, if the child believe this teacher cannot teach me, or if the child believe this school, this subject not going to bring anything to me, or like that way, the itself the, the, the mind going to block. So when it come to meditation also the same. When you look for the truth, you have to believe the truth. If you have the, the doubt regarding the truth, then even what when you see the truth, what will happen to you? So then in, remember in the very first level, in your practice, 
always develop that develop that every day and when you sit when you sit for your meditation you have to believe enlightenment it's a very simple it's a very simple basic method but it has a huge effect just imagine forget about anything else just without that confident or thrust without the the thrust regarding the water it going to quench your thirst if you drink that it not going to happen it physically you feel it but mentally it become kind of like a salty water so then remember yourself that in the beginning that you have to develop the confident trust with the practice and when you sit for meditation so you have to believe your liberation your enlightenment you have to believe that transformation you have to believe that you and you have to be ready for it if you are not ready for it what will happen don't imagine it going to happen automatically you it going to come to you through any kind of anyone uh, from the higher source or from anybody's initiation it not going to happen like that way it come out of your own inner preparation so this is that is why we we be giving this kind of the, the 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 tools to you so then we think yourself while you practice in day to day life you have to look your corners and see where you have to to work and how you have to change things within yourself you have to develop the super model of your own character you have to change the your blueprint because the way we came so far in the sansaric journey it is not capable to bring the enlightenment to you or bring the the liberation to you or bring the change to you so then if you keep follow the same thing it's not going to happen to you so then get into moderation this is a very good time for you as a human being you have all the qualifications you have the all the qualification you have all the wisdom and you have all the knowledge and you have all the capability to change your inner blueprint start to work for that and even that the with the things that what you eat just imagine it is a very simple thing it's very simple thing and start to change even that also the pattern the way that even completely completely change the the menu just try you will see how the pressure the it's a kind of like a the turbulence happening in you but fasten your seat belt don't don't try to you know in that time as you know when you fly you know in turbulence happen the very first thing what they, what the pilot tell go to your seat pass in your seat belt don't use toilet or don't walk and no nothing maybe you have you want you want to have a cup of tea or you want to have a little bit walk around you want to use the bathroom but when the turbulence happen you don't do that anything what you does you go pass in your seat belt and hold yourself and stay there the same thing when the change means it's there is a turbulence going to happen so then what you have to do come to the mindset of the vipassana that is your seat belt samadhi is the the seat then you come to the point and the direct perception you start to observe without changing it you don't give any chance try you will see you will see you are more capable to do lot of things than you think because of these patterns 
this habit this you just uh, trap there lot of lot of garbage around us in our head in our mind in our body lot of lot of dust and you don't see that your skin is you look you know you put the, the maybe the skin care and it look very beautiful shiny was like that but put a little bit warm water or steam hold it to steam and start to rub you will see how much the unnecessary dust come out of this shiny skin but it giving us the comfort you don't see it you it's it's a part of your life so then as a skin that what you see is not the real skin that me it is different that you have to question no i saw my skin this as me but what you saw you saw the dust aha uh -huh. see the same thing with your mind also you getting it that's good that's what you need because it is very difficult you know when sometimes when you rub or like as children when the when parents try to you know rub their uh, skin and even putting sometimes you know soap or try to clean children they don't like it they sometimes they cry so in the in the sansari journey when it come to enlightenment also we we also kind of like children so that's why this all the mental formations you have to little by little little by little you have to clean you can do it but the very first thing that you have to remember you want you have to have a want you have to have a will the mostly that we have the will related to the the outside things to absorb to us hold it to us we like we have the will to harbor ourselves take our life towards some material world but the, when it come to the will philosophically if you look at the the connotation of the will it it has a deeper meaning that meaning is take it has power to take you to your origin that is the will that is the real will that is the will that you come with not just clinging to this material to look at this this everything we have to let go by the time but the will means that you have strength you have power within you you born with it to to go to your own purification that is the will so you have the will to change your patterns you sit to that not to this this outside things because mostly we we learn and we teach for children and we learn through the culture tradition schooling and to become in according to the the identities in the society and we follow we want to have this i want to have that this that like that we think the oh will means getting this material world no when it come to the the beginning of the will the very meaning is it has power to take you to your purification when you have the effort when you have the want when you have the need to clean yourself that is what call will remember that so don't teach your children to to go with the will to regarding this material world so we also learn like that way or having a desire oh i can get this so then yourself look when you born to this world as a human being you already complete everything only thing is now you have to 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 get it done the get it done means in the human world the best that you can do is change yourself nothing else to change yourself you have to see 
So the vipassana is a method take you to the moment to see. When you see what you see, even you see the change. When you see the change naturally, it helps you to change. Otherwise, we always develop the permanent idea regarding ourselves, regarding our own experience and regarding even the, the, our practice. We do, we do, we come to the solid ideas, but we don't see how things happening according to the, the necessary conditions or the cause and effect. So when you are able to see that the, how things happen according to the cause and effect, you naturally get out of the, the holding nature. So when it comes to that, in Buddhism, there is a teaching called Vidarsana Upekha. So Vidarsana Upekha means insight equanimity. So the, you have the equanimity. So equanimity in the conventional level, equanimity, you, you keep the balance with things. So in when it comes to meditation practice, there are two kinds of equanimity. One is Samatha equanimity, another one is the Vidarsana equanimity. So Samatha equanimity is when you feel the good within yourself, you recognize it, you bear it as good. And when you feel the anger, unhappiness, you see it and you, you bear it, you hold it. So just you, you seeing it, but still, in that level, and sometimes the reactions come. You see it. You see you are happy. It is too much, but still you see it. You know that, but still the reactions come. But it comes knowingly. Another thing is unhappiness, sadness come that you see that you're getting mad, angry. And still you seeing it in the, then maybe the, the reactions come out of it. You know it's going to happen. But it's a, it's a kind of like you have no way to hold it or stop it. So that is the tranquility level of equanimity. You recognize it. And you see the, the good and the bad separately. You know that. But still, the, it, uh, the reactions come. And when it comes to the Vidarsana level of equanimity, it is not like that. You recognize this moment that the sitting is comfortable for you. But you don't allow it to be there like that way. The reason is, if it is going to be there like that way, you recognize it and you allow it to be there. That's what happened in the tranquility meditation. You saw the, the happiness, you allow it to be as happy. That's why it starts to go into reactions. So you saw the, the unhappiness and it went to yeah, why you allow it to be there as unhappiness? It's kind of like you saw, but you say, let it be, let it be. Like that. Don't disturb it, let it be. Don't question it, let it be. So when it comes to vipassana, you recognize happiness, but you still recognize that is a cause and effect. And it is come out of the four elements. And it is the behavior of the perception and the, the awareness or the consciousness arise within us. It, and this all happening according to necessary conditions that happening, that is it. You go deeper 
to the bottom and recognize, you know, it is happy moment. Oh, I feel so comfortable, but you're not going to be there, just be there. You start to recognize even that comfort is here. That comfort come out of the, the behavior of four elements. So when the four elements change, the comforts change. When you come to that understanding, the comfort has no power to go into reaction. Why? Because you don't take it as a, the solid experience. So this is all you have, you just see, that's it. Even the, with the anger, the same. When you see that you're getting angry, you don't allow it to be there. Because if you allow it to be there, you saw it, then it go to reaction. So you see the anger, but you recognizing it is the behavior of the four elements. And once you see it deeply, it's not going to go into the, the action. So, because when you go into that level, you're going to see the change. That is the Vidarsana level. You, you recognize the change. There is nothing ha happening without changing. So when you able to see the change, itself become neutral. But if you allow it to be there, it's just not going to be there. It's somehow going to, to come as an action. Even sometimes that physically you don't see it and it's going to deeply psychologically affect for us. And maybe there are things in deeper in your heart, physically no, you don't see any actions, but it is there. You allow it to be there. So then maybe the happiness, don't allow it to be there as a conventional happiness. Don't hope because then it become the memory and little by little, little by little, it is start to grow inside you. You don't see the desire come and the, like a shadow. And then what will happen later, your behavior going to change. Why? Because you have a dream regarding that whatever the moment you had the happiness and now anymore it's not happening. And then you little by little start to get mad, unhappy, disappointed. Even you don't see. You also don't know why you get mad, angry. Nothing happened, everything good. Even you go to doctor physically, everything good. And there's no reason why, why that person go like this. But because the deeply, there you hold it to memory. So unhappiness also the same. And the whatever the sadness, worry you hold, just let it be there. Maybe there's no reactions come. Maybe you have no power, authority to go against that. Even to say something, you just hold it. You allow it to be there. Even you don't think about it that much, you allow it to be there. Then what will happen? Little by little, little by little, it come like a shadow and psychologically start to react. And maybe you start to get pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, and knee pain. And it's like you have a person and you don't like that person. Then. You don't like to go with that person out. Maybe it can be your husband, wife, children, parents, or brothers, sisters, friends. So you don't like to go out with that person because that something happened. But you cannot tell it. So you stay now, you, you keep working. Then what will happen? The psychologically, you start to get some pain. Physically, you get injured, disease, something. And then when, when maybe headache, or something can come as a, it come to pro, to protect you. That's it. The, 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 because that is where you survive. 
but you don't see you don't know then you think it's something else so how about you go to doctor and the you doctor do any operation there and then try to fix it you cannot fix so then yourself you are the one who did because you allow it to be there and then now as a result of that it start to came so that's why but when it come to the vipassana level you clean you clean it to the bottom there's no germs that allow to be there you clean it to the bottom how you recognizing this all change when you see that change you release from it you you release from two ways this is very important ajjattava bahidava so ajjatt in a yourself within your own body mind feelings so when something happens that you have your personal experience look into it that all that personal experience that whatever you have that going to that that change moment by moment so whatever the good or bad everything change that is one experience so this is vidarsana level of that uh, equanimity how you develop it so then you don't bound to any kind of personal feelings pleasant unpleasant both and you even you don't allow it to be there neutral just to be there no because you see it you recognize with understanding you know this everything change and bahid the bahid the means the outside so others also you have to see then with your even regarding with your husband wife children friends and family members it is just not only you and you have to recognize whatever happening within yourself the other people also go through the same like sickness disease old age death they, these are very common that you can see very easily you no need kind of like a background knowledge to see this that's why it's a dharma is a very simple it is everywhere you no need any textbook to to recognize so other people die i also die it's very simple basic knowledge if you able to access with that so you you recognize it so ajjata in the beginning experience it within you then the bhaida then you start to recognize why because then that uh, as example if something happen to another person maybe you become so worry about that person and may, when when something happen to other person like pleasant thing something good maybe you become so joyful happy and because that sometimes when something happen to another person bad thing maybe you start to react to it in a very bad way but if you know that whatever happen to you as a good or bad and that all change then when whatever happen to other person also you don't go so crazy because something happen to you to other person maybe as example if somebody in in conventional level we react like as example if something happen to somebody say something to your husband wife or children friends and brothers or kind of like that you get mad conventionally but remember that is what the 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 very nature of the world but you no need to behave like that so this understanding is you little bit go beyond it when something happen to that you recognize that also going to change maybe it didn't happen to you but you deeply recognize see because something happened to another person and you go to the middle and you do something very bad and then you 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 going to jail maybe you have done it for other person without knowingly it change maybe for the 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 whatever happened there even it is a very minor thing but you come with the action and make it something big 
So like that, remember, ajatta bahidda. The both way you recognizing this all good or bad, everything change. And the another ajatta bahidda. So whatever the things that happen from other people to you, this is very important. Remember in life as a memory, we have a huge collection, the garbage, the skin, that the dirty skin related to other people, whatever they have done to us. We all, it is a kind of like, you know, it's a humming inside our uh, head always. Mm, 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 like a bee. So always, you know, uh, he did this to me, she did this to me, oh, like that way. Always in our head. Get out of it. So whatever how other people have done to you, and don't don't hold it to it. Get out of it. So don't keep repeating it. Knowingly, that change. And other thing is that the whatever the relationship that you have to other people also very conventional and it's not going to be forever. So then you have to understand that also whatever happening within you to other people. So as example, as a husband, wife, children, friends and family, you bound to other people. And then you believe, oh, without me, other people cannot be there. It's not like that. If you die tomorrow, today, then they may be there in the beginning. They will feel a little bit sad, worry. Then after that one week, you know, they start to go their own way. And sometimes they become happy. Oh, that's, you know, yeah, it's that's finished, done. So like that, don't think that, oh, without me, your children cannot live. Oh, without me, your husband, your wife cannot survive. No. Even by the, you know, the very first day, if somebody throw you to garbage, remember, still you, you survive. That is, the, that is the, the qualification that you have when you come to this human world. This is, you're going to survive. So if you have the, the necessary merits, so if you don't have the merits wherever you are, you, you get out of it. But don't afraid for life. So that, that fearlessness you have to have. And the other thing is, don't bound to any, anybody or any relationship believing, oh, without you, they cannot survive. No. They're going to be. Okay. And without them, you cannot survive. No, it's also not like that. Somehow, you, you will survive. So recognizing this, all the pleasure and pain related to you and related to others and from other people to whatever come to you, from you to whatever go to other people, that all change moment by moment. This anything not permanent. So recognizing it by through yourself. So in the beginning, it is not easy. That uh, a, a, in Dharma it call, there is a way it call that uh, Uttama Matra Upadana. So Upadana means grasping, holding, clinging. Uttama means Uttama ma, the matra means the matra means the very minimum level. Uttama means that the highest the strength you put to to minimize your grasping nature. So that is the the very meaning. Maybe there is a one word in English, but this is the the very simple meaning. You. Strongly minimize 
your inner grasping nature to to whatever feel you related to good or bad and whatever regarding other people also so then the both way other people release from you and you release from other people so this both necessary when you practice the vidarsana this both going to happen so that is where you become free from others others become free from you and sometimes that's why you want to have the freedom but you believe you cannot be free because of other people see and they 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 also believe and they also believe sometimes that you want to be free and they that you cannot be free because of them and they want to free be free and they cannot become free because of you it's not like that it is just a, that is what we call where that the dual of the dependent nature it's is go like that it is a thought but when it come to the tranquility state in the beginning you detach from this all the the feelings and you come to a point just to be in the moment and from that very moment you start to go deep and see how this moment by moment things change so in conventional life you recognizing this nature and you become more better person to do you a best for other person why because you know this not going to be forever that is where you become better person but in the conventional knowledge when you look you think oh that is not good because then that the people going to be separate it's not like that the same like reminding the death that when we remind is the death sometimes people think conventional level mind thing it is very negative way but if you remind the death you become more more sharp and clear productive person in day to day life so that's why sometimes we try to to get the dharma through our conventional dusty muddy understanding it not going to happen as i mentioned the shiny skin we see maybe it is just the dust so like that then the purification through your own mind through your own experience get out of this and have the clear mind and with that clear mind start to get into the bottom and see the the truth and that freedom when you recognize within yourself within your own feelings when you become free that freedom will liberate you not only that that freedom will guide other people to liberate themselves that is where you become the good example and you get the best out of your life and you share your best for others to giving that example making them free from you that going to be the greatest gift so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhityo vajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi digai kurubhava ittavata chammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe satta अनुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया मे पुण्य कमंगया वह हो तो सब दुखा तनुचतु ब्लिश्यू